Hi, I'm Katie Swan. My name is Abby Music. And I'm Hannah Olofsson. And welcome to the Snapbacks podcast. This podcast will explain the ins and outs of SNAP benefits. While we have researched the many different facets of SNAP, we are not recipients of the program, nor do we have the firsthand knowledge of what it is like to live it. All of us are social work students at the University of Nebraska, Omaha. We aim to show that hunger in America is not as polarizing of an issue as most people believe. In fact, the amazing truth of SNAP and hunger in America lies somewhere in the middle. Okay, it's working. There we go. Okay, all right. Hi, I'm Katie Swan and I'm here with Sirtha. Today's episode focuses on the relationship between SNAP and seniors and features a part of a conversation we had with Carolina Padilla. Mrs. Padilla is the founder of the Intercultural Senior Center, a facility that works with immigrant seniors to provide them with culturally sensitive services. Ms. Padilla, how did you get into working with older adults? So my inclination to the senior populations being more like a family. I grew up in a very uh, women-dominant family. And coming to the States already 27 years ago, I never got a chance to go back. And I was very um, close to my mom's family. Uh, my mom passed when I was very young. So growing up around women and my aunts and they got older and they health was not the best and they didn't ever got the, the not that they didn't care for them, but you know, our um, medical medical service in different countries, they're taking in a different, they're not well taking care of it. So that's how I, um, I heard and saw my aunts declining in health and I always wanted to be there to help out with, but my hands were tied up. So I was already here in the States and I just thought that my way to give back to them was taking care for the elderly seniors that were here and I could just do make a difference. I realized that if it, that was very true, regardless of any country that you go, um, the senior population tends to be uh, ignored many times and they get, that's the reason they get more isolated and lonely, you know, and so um, that's how I really felt in my heart that I needed to do what I do now. So the organization has been around for 11 years. Um, we have increased our programming and services since we started. Um, we have all, our own building now, which is amazing. I don't know if you had had a chance to come and visit it. Even three months ago, before the pandemic started, we had over 100 seniors every day. Can you tell us about the relationship between senior isolation and poverty? I know you kind of just touched on it right there, but just a little more in depth. If they're getting some other kind of assistance, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, or, you know, food stamps, they can still make it because our seniors have um, also medical needs. And just by paying those expenses, many times a person of age has to decide in buying the medication to keep it, me and myself healthier than eating. Um, many times the senior is ashamed to ask for food. They don't want to say it. Even if, you know, they, 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 they don't eat, they might tell you I'm okay, but you know better that they don't even have even the more, even the basic for a meal, you know. Um, of course, we serve the English speaker community, but we also have the Latino community and the refugee community. And each group has different needs and they, we have to approach them in different ways. Uh, for most of the Latino and refugee communities, they live more in the, into the intergenerational families. And, you know, as a parent, the first thing is give my kids something to eat. Mm -hmm. And when you have a grandparent there, you just have, you make sure that your kids eat first before everybody else. And sometimes we forget that, you know, our parents or grandparents, they also need that care. But it's all related to health because if they don't have the mobility to go out and get food, it, that's food insecurity. And if they don't have a way to get out, how are they going to bring that food to their table? So for that reason is that we are ISC. We provide a light breakfast every morning. It's, it's not a complete breakfast, but it's at least they have you know, oatmeal and toast with jam and peanut butter or other options or yogurt with granola, something because we understand that they take so many medications that they need to have something in their stomach, in their tummies too. Um, so we also, um, when ISC opened doors, we started a pantry program, which was very, very small. Let me tell you, it was just a little small bag with basic items. 
and as time went on and on, we, um, our pantry got bigger and we started to um, ask for more contributions and um, all seniors were getting a nice pantry. Uh, we partnered with other nonprofits that we were getting donations of fresh products here too, which was very nice. And it continues to be that way. And then last year we decided that probably it was time for Intercultural Senior Center to become a site from uh, in partnership with a food bank. So now we're open to the public um, to provide a pantry. Before it was just for the participants of ISC. Now it's for the whole community. But the person has to be 50 and over to be able to receive a food pantry. For uh, many of you or many people that I talk to, they say, my gosh, but 50, gosh, that's young, you know? Um, yeah, it is young when you're healthy. But when you are, uh, when you have health conditions, it, it is hard. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. We're delivering pantries. Uh, we, in, 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 well, before everything, all this problem started, um, seniors were coming here and getting pantries. Now that everything changes, change, um, our transportation is doing food deliveries, pantry deliveries to all seniors. So in the last five weeks, we have delivered um, seven, 700 pantries to seniors in the community. Uh, because we know that is food insecurity. They don't have food on the table if we don't help a little bit. Yeah, a lot of people just don't even realize, you know, sometimes we need to fill that gap. And I think that's really cool that um, you guys are able to do that. I know we're all very inundated with information about the coronavirus, but how does the pandemic uniquely affect our senior citizens? See, as, as you age, um, as we age, um, we become lonely because we're not as well connected as we were when we were younger. Even when, when you know, we work, when we work, we have that relationship with coworkers, right? And when we stop working because of age or anything like that, or similar or, or health conditions, we tend not to do that anymore. And we get disconnected, even with family members. So that's how we say, I'm feeling lonely. It's because there is no more people caring for that person. There is no more connections in our society. And that's what takes it to uh, mental health problems, right? Because that person is just by herself. And, and the world comes and falls apart because there is no more communication. And I, so, I mean, and, and isolation pushes more into what um, food insecurity is because it's, it's, they're not, again, into the society. And so that's what we're seeing now with the COVID-19 is that seniors are more isolated because they cannot get out in the community. Even neighbors are afraid to approach other neighbors or even if it's an older population in that neighborhood because they don't want to have the one-on-one -on -one contact. They, 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 they're more isolated because there is no, no help at all for nothing else. And so that the reason we decided to move forward with delivering pantries because we thought that was the only solution for um, the seniors to get some kind of food on their table. We are also providing case management, meaning that we make phone calls to seniors, making sure they're doing well, making sure that um, they're not losing any benefits because sometimes certain benefits have to be gone. They go, it's an ongoing, every year you need to reapply, every year you have to confirm your income, every year you have to provide so much information. But at the same time, we wanna make sure that no one is taking advantage of them because because with the COVID, you know, they offering so many things that maybe many times they're not true, or many of they're reaching out to seniors saying, if you give me your social security number, you know, with the COVID-19, we make want to make sure that we send you this amount of money or extra money or which are things that are not happening. And so ISC is being proactive first in providing that pantry to them and um, in making sure that we are connecting with them and we asking the question, how, what is another way that we can help you out? Yeah, yeah, it's a scary time for everyone right now, but especially um, older adults. 
So we just wanted to ask one last question. We usually ask all of our podcast guests this is, um, we know with SNAP and a program like it, kind of hard to find where the truth is. So we just wanted to know what's one myth you wish you could spell, dispel about food insecurity in America? I think there should be a consideration for this program with the aging of our community. Many times we think about um, individuals who had a great job and now they're going to retire and enjoy their life. And I think that we're for forgetting about all those individuals who have worked all their life in different areas, in different fields, they need the help and the support. Mm -hmm. So I think that the law in some way might change where there should be more consideration in those programs where seniors can have more uh, possibilities to get more um, food support and help to avoid that food insecurity because all what that makes is that person with health conditions to get to the point where they get to um, emergency cares, emergency hospitals for unnecessary hospitalizations that it is just because the person didn't have food on the table. I completely agree with you. I think that a lot of times older adults are overlooked in the conversation about food insecurity and it's time as a country, yeah, we do start including them in that conversation. Um, Mrs. Padilla, thank you so much for joining us today. We love to hear what you had to say and this was a really informative um, interview. Thank you so much. No, thank you uh, all of you for inviting me to be part of this uh, time to share with you and give you information about this NAP program. That's, you know, what we're doing here in ISD, how we're helping every day um, all seniors. Thank you. You've been listening to SNAP Facts. While this podcast features students from the University of Nebraska Omaha, it does not reflect the values or opinions of the university. Our theme music comes from Culture House. That's culture with an X, and you can find them on Instagram. This podcast is produced by Let's Make Stuff Productions, and you can find them at letsmakestuff.productions. We owe a big thanks to all of our contributors for sharing their expertise with us. This show would not have been possible without you. Thank you.